Hi, I'm Jeannie Fisher. I'm the reference archivist here at Seattle Municipal Archives, and today I'm going to give you a tour of our research room. The archives is located on the third floor at City Hall, and one of the first things you might notice when you get off the elevator is this exhibit case we have in the lobby. About every four months, we'll feature a new set of materials from the archives based on a specific theme, and the exhibit we have in here right now is on pioneering women in Seattle's electrical trades. And it tells the story of how those women fought for an equal and fair work environment and how that struggle for equal treatment continues even today. So now we're at the end of the hall next to the clerk's office front desk, just outside the research room. And if we pan over here to the corner, you'll see an old metal filing cabinet on display, which gives us an example of how records used to be stored in the clerk's office back many years ago. And there's also some pictures on display showing the clerk staff back in the 1930s. And here's a worker holding the city charter, and that's that metal file cabinet in the background. And then here's another picture of the staff at work in the clerk's office. And so now we're ready to sign in and be buzzed in by the front desk staff to start our research. So once we're buzzed in, we can enter the research room, and this is where you would come to access records held in the archives. Most of our materials are kept in our record vaults, so to make them available to you, we pull them on request and bring them to you here. We can also be on hand to meet with you and to help you navigate our databases to find records for your research topic. And one of the first things people tend to mention when they visit is what a great view we have, and we are really lucky to have big windows that give us a nice view of our part of downtown with lots of light, so it's a really great place to do research. These records on the table were pulled to help answer some of the questions we've received recently, so in a minute I'll go over what they are and the questions that they help to answer. But first I'll give you a brief orientation to the room. And the materials that live in this room are mostly secondary sources, like books and reports used for quick reference. So, for example, the research room holds our collection of Seattle City directories. And the directories are kind of like early phone books, but with a lot more detail and more information. And they're really great resources for researching individuals and businesses in Seattle's past. And our collection of directories starts in 1890 and goes up to 1990. You'll also find a small selection of some of our more popular annual reports from city departments like law, parks, city light, and public health. And these annual reports can be a great resource for getting an overview of departmental projects and priorities over time. The research room also holds a small reference library. And the books here relate in some way to the history of Seattle and the region. And in fact, many of the books included here were written by authors who have used our records and this room for their research. You'll also find City of Seattle budgets and financial reports as well as bound volumes of city ordinances, the Seattle Municipal Code, and city charters. So recently we had a question about how the city established rules for building construction after the Great Seattle Fire in June 1889. And the answer to that question is found in this ordinance, Ordinance 1147, which was passed in July of that year. Um, it's essentially the city's first building code, and it's a pretty long ordinance that goes into detail about the kinds of buildings that would be allowed and how they had to be built. So it's not only informationally valuable, but as a completely handwritten original document, it's also an interesting object in and of itself. Another question we recently received was about the city's bid to host the 1976 Winter Olympics here in Seattle. The bid was submitted in 1967 and this is a copy that we have in our holdings, which we pulled and scanned for the researcher. Whenever we scan materials on request, we put that scan online for everyone to access. So a copy of this document is now freely available for anyone to view and download from our website. We've also gotten a few questions recently on the West Seattle Bridge. And this document, which was used by former council member Jeanette Williams, and you can see her name there on the cover, was published in 1978, and it describes a number of possible design options for the West Seattle Bridge. And it includes drawings and descriptions, and so it illustrates the kinds of options that were being considered by City Council at the time, 
and it speaks to how a decision was ultimately made. The last example I'd like to show you has to do with a recent question about the history of redlining in Seattle. And this is a report that was done in 1975 by the Central Seattle Community Council Federation. And it describes what redlining is, how it was happening in Seattle, and what the impacts were on the community. And the findings in this report led the city to form a reinvestment task force to evaluate the problem and come up with recommendations to address it. And records from that task force are also in our holdings here at SMA. And this particular report has been scanned and is available to download from an online exhibit we have on redlining in Seattle, which is available on our website under Exhibits and Education. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the research room. As always, please feel free to ask us if you have any questions at all. You can reach us at archives at seattle.gov. Thanks. <laughs>